And after the singing of the hymn, we're going to ask Sister Anthea. She hasn't been to church for a long time, so we're going to be praying. that my sister will be leading. I pray that you please be with each one of us. I pray that you can help us to open our hearts to receive what will be given. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <coughs> Welcome everyone to our Sabbath School program. There's too many names to mention individually, but uh, during the divine service they were mentioned. And all the visitors, we're happy to have you with us. And we also have to have Enid and her family here taking the Sabbath school. Um, I wrote this poem for the welcome. Welcome regular members and visitors. Thank you for accepting the invitation. We've been looking forward to this day with much anticipation. Today has been set aside by the Sabbath school as Visitors Day. We know that you are going to be blessed as you join us as we sing and pray. First, we are going to feed you with spiritual food. And after the service, we have something in the hall that's just as good. I've been told by management that if you stay awake, you will receive a large portion of ice cream because there's no cake. <laughs> we hope that after today, you will be encouraged to visit regularly. You must, because we all need the Lord in this world of uncertainty. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good morning, church. Can you all hear me? Um, I'd just like to thank this opportunity for allowing the Sabbath School to let me share just a little bit of information um, on drugs as we go into Drug Awareness Month um, and we try to address this pressing issue of drug abuse. If I may take a quick survey amongst you, I'll just wait for the slide. Okay, please raise your hands if you have personally witnessed or encountered someone who you suspect is using drugs. Okay, a few people. Good. Right, next question. Do you know anyone in your family or circle of friends that you sus suspect is a user? So now a little bit closer to home. 
Do you feel comfortable talking about drug-related issues with friends, family, or trusted adults? Okay, and I'm just going to follow that up by, if I may ask, maybe someone would like to share why they're not so comfortable. Is it too sensitive? Is it? Do you feel that someone might take it the wrong way? I, th yes. I think maybe like for myself, I feel like I'm not equipped to do right. it. Okay. And so based on that, I wouldn't initiate a conversation. Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that because today I've entitled my talk Redemption Road, World Drug, oh, sorry. World Drug Crisis, and I've included South Africa in and why Jesus is the answer. And as we go through this talk, I want you to bear in mind that we are to bring the light to the world, but Jesus is there to save these individuals. So if you are feeling a little bit shy or uncomfortable, our job then is to pray, and pray without ceasing for these individuals. Um, I'd like to share maybe someone that we knew um, it was a musician, his name was SK, and he was a wonderful person. He um, played with our family music, not a Christian, but knew of Christ. And um, one, of the, one regret that I think maybe we as a family have is that I'm not sure how much of Christ I shared with him. And we, he stayed at our home, he went to church with us, and one evening he sang Abide With Me, and that piece is sort of ruined for me now because he was crying with Abide With Me. And his thought was, and he was on drugs. Wow. He was on a Nyope, a very common drug in Johannesburg. But he knew the song Abide With Me, and his, his wish was that he would, um, sing abide with me for his mom's funeral. Unfortunately, due to drugs, he never got that opportunity. He took his own life, and his mom died of heartbreak because of it. And the question that when you hear this hymn, did I share Christ? What did I do? Um, drugs is a pandemic that is increasingly, that is increasing yearly and governments don't have the answer. In fact, some approach is to legalize certain drugs. Some to turn a blind eye, some to get in on the profits, uh, or supply the equipment needed to drug addicts. Right. Now, please, I'm sorry, there are some graphic images, so please look away, I'll try to go through them quickly. Um, here we have, this is one article that said, Globally, some 35 million people, um, and then and up from an earlier estimate of 30 million people, suffer from drug use, right? It affects the whole world. That's an article about marijuana being high amongst inmates. Okay. On the left-hand side, your left, is Pakistan. Wow. Drugs in Pakistan. Look at that. That adult, good-looking adult, look at what drugs has reduced him to. On the right-hand side, if you think it's just certain places, that's Afghanistan. Um, also, same sort of situation. Sierra Leone, and there's a bit of controversy with Sierra Leone, because at the moment they are mixing their drugs with human bones, which they get from graveyards. Right? The bottom is um, Kenya that has a high drug problem amongst the youth. And here we have, here's the article, uh, I think it was the Business Times. Um, the ex-Honduras president was charged for aiding and abetting drug uh, peddlers, drug cartels. And this was last year, right? The United Nations um, on, uh, did a special report on drugs, it was released last year. They uh, called this, they 
placed this report or printed this report because it affected them achieving and uh, I wish um, oh there we go because it affected them achieving the sustainable development goals. Now these were the four areas that affected them. Firstly, that drugs was a challenge, right? Because it hindered <coughs> their progress of making policies and laws to control the situation. It also did not allow them access to evidence-based information uh, that talked about HIV AIDS and hepatitis C, which they also wanted to control. Mm. Um, it also, on the, the, fourth, uh, sorry, the third <laughs> aspect was that with law enforcement, they couldn't keep up with the criminality of the drug traffickers. And lastly, they did not know how to control their public health system. Now for me, not once in this entire report do they mention the winning of the soul or the drug user. They were more worried about policies, etc., than the actual individual and what they can do for the individual. This is their statistics. Over the last 10 years, drugs have increased by 23%, right? And they give you all the numbers. This is cannabis is uh, about 219, an estimate of 219 million people sure. on cannabis. 60 million on uh, opiates, 36 on um, methamphetamines, uh, 22 million on um, cocaine, and ecstasy, 20 million. These are the stats regarding women and how many percentages of women are on these drugs, right? 13.2 million people as of last year, will inject themselves with some sort of drug. 6.6 mm. million are living with hepatitis C, 1.6 million are living with HIV, 1.4 million are living with both HIV and hepatitis <coughs> C. People with drug disorders, so the effects that the drugs have taken, have increased by 45% across the world. Right. So, as you can see, drugs is a huge problem. Um, South Africa is included. South Africa is the global hotspot, according to the business. Sorry, according to the business tech, it's our global hotspot for drug trafficking, because Cape Point is central to easy access to Europe, as well as the East. So it's easy for the drug cartel to have access to um, the escape routes, etc., and trading <coughs> in regards to the drugs. Uh, and here's just the quote that says that we are easy access to Europe and um, the, the East, the Far East. So, what the world needs is Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to ask Uncle Malcolm to lead us in a familiar chorus. I had to learn it, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think it's a generation thing, and I'm glad I learned it. Um, to lead us in the chorus, what the world needs is Jesus, just a glimpse of him. I'm going to ask that you stand, uh, you may join. I don't know if you stand, Uncle Malcolm. But please join us in singing, what the world needs is just a glimpse of Jesus.
So let's take a moment to just ponder this profound truth. What the world needs is Jesus in the midst of darkness that often accompanies substance abuse. This simple yet powerful statement reminds us of the ultimate source of hope and healing. True transformation comes not just from external interventions, but from a profound encounter with love, grace, and redemption offered only by Jesus. Jesus answered in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This highlights the centrality of Jesus Christ as our ultimate source of truth and salvation. The Bible does not explicitly mention drugs as we understand them today, but it does address the principles related to substances and to substance and pleasures that alter the mind's behavior. Okay. One example is referenced in and found in Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21, and it says, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, um, dissension, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. In fact, the term witchcraft in this um, text comes is translated from the Greek word pharmakia, which also includes pharmaceutical drugs, which can be a problem. But today our focus is drug abuse. Okay, so as a Christian community, we play a vital role in sharing Christ, not only as to the drug user, but to the concerned citizens, healthcare professionals, policy makers, and our educators. We have to rescue, but we cannot do this without understanding what we are up against. We need to go to scripture to equip ourselves because we are called to rescue, to care, and not to judge. Um, so let's understand what drugs are. Drugs are chemical substances that affect both your mind and your body. The prolonged use of drugs may lead to physical and or psychological uh, dependence. An overdose of any drug may lead to death. And there are many individuals, because of the state of their mind, take their own life. I've been witness to it in quite a few of my students at schools. Um, it's, it really affects the learner you know, with, when they see this, because they then have a lower chance of actually making it through their life without drugs. Okay, so why do, why do we take drugs? Um, teens try to take drugs to feel older, to feel cool, to feel different, peer pressure. Maybe they have had access to family and friends that have been taking it. Maybe it's the media that have influenced it, like social media. To relieve stress or relax, boredom, celebrations, to be happy all the time, um, and past emotional and physical traumas that they want to suppress. Now, the reason why I mentioned teens specifically is because there are exceptions where there are children that do take drugs at younger ages, but most of the data is aimed at teens because that's when experimentation wants to start. Um, <clears throat> so. What are the risk factors? Friends who use drugs amongst teens, abs absence of healthy recreational or leisure interests, early antisocial behavior, example aggression, hyperactivity. Now this is one I see a lot in the classroom and what some parents do is Ritalin is the answer. Mm. Ritalin is termed kitty cocaine. I had a, a, a child in my class in two years ago. He was on Ritalin because of ADHD. It turned him into someone who suffered from depression, 
So they gave the child antidepressants and it caused him to hallucinate that in the classroom he was seeing a wolf attacking him. This is 10 years old. And as a teacher, I'm not equipped. How do I deal with a situation like this? So, um, sorry. parental drug use, academic failure, um, little commitment to school, favorable attitude towards drugs, prenatal exposure to alcohol, uh, alcohol syndrome, pre, uh, prenatal alcohol syndrome, really the children suffer in schools to be able to think and get the information that they need. Their development is very poor. Family management problems, poorly defined rules, lack of monitoring, excessive discipline, negative communication patterns, and poor anger management all contribute to the um, risk factors in taking drugs. So what types of drugs do we have? We have stimulants, the first group. <coughs> they speed up the brain and central nervous system. Depressants, they slow down the brain and central nervous system. And hallucinogens, they are drugs that the user uses um, to alter their state of consciousness, right? And there's some of them that are listed. Um, next slide, I just want to go through a few examples. Again, please, some warning is advised for sensitive viewers. Nicotine and tobacco, the effects of nicotine and tobacco. Healthy lung, smoker's lung. These are cancers. Um, this is a baby that is underdeveloped because of smoking. Uh, and this is the example, let me just go back a slide, of a stimulant, a drug taken as a stimulant and the effects of it. Uh, alcohol, right? These are the, uh, sorry, let me just get the depressants or the downers. <coughs> alcohol tends to do that. This is the effects of alcohol in the body. <coughs> so normal brain, uh, a person who has Alzheimer's disease, you can see there's a little bit of damage to the brain. Mm -hmm. Person who, who is on excessive alcohol, binging, sure. right? Healthy liver, fatty liver, which is also caused by alcohol, corrosions <coughs> of the liver, right? And if you compare the size, that it, that's what it looks like. Healthy heart, <coughs> heart that is being attacked by alcohol, right? Alcohol, kidney damage. So these are the effects that these people are faced with mm. on a daily basis when they take these drugs. Right, and of course, the hallucinogens of mind-altering substances, these are the faces of methamphetamine. Quite uh, popular at the moment and on the rise. This lady here is 40 years old, right? So these are young people that are being affected. Right, in South Africa, um, I've included this because of these are the common ones in South Africa that the um, SAP is trying to deal with, alcohol, cannabis, heroin, niaque, very popular in Johannesburg, uh, mandrax, methamphetamine, right, also known as cat, uh, crack cocaine, codeine, uh, I believe that's a thing and you get them in cough mixtures, um, which people go and buy cough mixtures to drink it. Methamphetamine. Now this is interesting. This is on the rise in South Africa. But in America, they've surpassed methamphetamine. They are now taking a drug that includes a tranquilizer. So it's known as Trank. And it's a tranquilizer used for animals, which they put into the methamphetamine. And it causes a flesh-eating bacteria, which they are now addicted to. Because their mind, state of mind is so altered. Ecstasy, oh, ecstasy, um, LSD, and of course the white pipe is what uh, we are struggling with in South Africa. In the midst of our drug crisis, there shines a beacon of hope, the unwavering promise that Jesus saves, right? Um, as the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 10 verse 13, 
for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The powerful truth echoes throughout the ages, reminding, matter, reminding us that no matter how lost or broken or how damaged we may feel, there is always hope in the saving grace of <clears throat> Jesus Christ. I would like to go. So this gentleman, Justin Luke Martha, he was addicted to heroin and he writes a blog and he says, why is Jesus more satisfying? Right? And he gives three reasons. He says, number one, there is no condemnation in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 verse 1 says he forgives the sin and the struggles. Mm -hmm. Number two, Jesus sets us free from temptation. Mm -hmm. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, Paul gives us a blood bought promise of God that recovering addicts can cling to. By God's grace, there is a way out of temptation. Amen. And at, at the bottom, I am not doing the time. Okay. Again. So at that point, I would like to demonstrate to our youth, if they are youth, if you don't mind me <coughs> indulging me a little bit, um, to the little ones, if you can come forward, I would like to share a story with you about temptation. <coughs> So just earlier, we just asked them to post the placard that we say no to drugs. And any you are in my class, please come up. I'm going to ask you to volunteer <laughs> for me. Right. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. <laughs> right. Let me ask all of you. What is a habit? <laughs> what is a habit? Yes, tell, tell us. It's something that you always do, something that you do over and over again, correct? And do we get good habits or bad habits or what type of habits do we get? Good, good and bad habits. Anyone of you want to give me an example of a good and bad habit? <coughs> Boys, girls? Do you know of an example? Annie, how about you? Tell us about a good or bad habit. A good habit is like running every day. Running every day is a good habit, okay. A bad habit is like when you fight people every day, when you take drugs, right, Annie? <laughs> every day. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and do you get tempted to do good habits or bad habits? <laughs> you don't know. I think it's most times we get tempted to do bad habits right? than the good habits. Okay, so boys and girls, I'm going to show you something, right? And if you put your hands together for me, like that, right? piece of cotton, this represents habit forming. Right? So when we do something, right, and we do it once, we like it, right? Maybe it's a good habit, maybe it's a bad habit, right? Eddie, pull your hands apart, let's see if you can break it. It's easy to break, right? Put your hands together again for me. Right, so now let's say we are creating a habit. We do it again, like brushing our teeth, right? Good habit, right? Saying prayers, good habit. And we do it over and over and over. Sorry, Annie. And over and over. And eventually it becomes part of our lives, mm -hmm. right? Now, what if it's a bad habit? What do you think is going to happen? Yes? Tell us. You're not going to be able to break the bad habit. It's going to become very difficult. Right, Annie, let's see. Okay, 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 don't know what you're saying. <laughs> right. Very bad to 
very hard to break a bad habit, but we have an answer. And our answer is represented by my scissors. Jesus Christ is our answer. Amen. We need to pray and ask God to help us to break these bad habits. Mm. Right? Mm. And you know what? God is going to answer. Amen. He's going to come and he's going to set us free Amen. from our bad habits. Amen. And I hope that you will remember that, boys and girls. When someone says, please try this, what are you going to say, Annie? Yes, and what are your friends going to say? You're going to say, yes, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a good habit, right? If it's a good habit, it's a bad habit, you can say, yes, I tried it. If it's alcohol, drugs, and your friends, what are you going to say? No. Say no to drugs. Say no to bad habits. Right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. The third reason, and I like what this gentleman said here, he said, heroin is fleeting. The hit that you get eventually wears off, but Jesus is eternal. And the knowing of Jesus is continuous. Um, <clears throat> at this point, I would like us to sing, take my life and let it be just as a consecration and a prayer for each of us and for our children to consecrate our lives to Jesus in regards to our habits and to God. I think it's in 340. Oh, sorry, 3.30. <coughs> So in conclusion, 
Second Timothy. In conclusion, Second Timothy four verses one to five. We are reminded of this of what Christ uh, what we can do as Christians, right, when it comes to drug awareness. Often we are scared, but in this passage, in the presence of God and Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, we are called to proclaim the message of truth with unwavering conviction and perseverance. We are urged to preach the word in season and out of season, reproving, rebuking, and exhorting with patience and sound doctrine. In light of this, we can. what can we as Christians do to help with drug awareness? Firstly, pray. Consecrate our lives to God. We can uphold principles of truth and integrity when we have consecrated our lives to God. We are serving as beacons of light and hope in a world often shrouded by darkness. Pray for the drug addicts. Pray for the drug dealers. God, in his still small voice, can save at all times. Um, just also another example, at Westbury Seventh-day Adventist Church, they would have prayer sessions early on a Sunday morning. They wouldn't go to homes. They would just stand on the street corner and we would meet up in groups and just pray. And two things that happened that one morning. One, as we were praying on the street corner, a drug dealer came out. Powder on his face. It was right in front of a drug factory. And the group was, can we pray with you? And he was, yes, please pray for me. And pray for my brother, he's in there. And we prayed. And we hope, we, we shared a message with him of hope. And we know that God will speak to his heart for the mere fact that he agreed for us to pray for to him, mm. for him. That same morning, my mom's section of the group were walking and there was a car full of teenagers and obviously they had come from a place and they were not okay. They were obviously high. And one of the boys said, pray for me, auntie. And he started to tear. God will speak to these people. We just need to pray. Mm. Right? Pray individually as well. Secondly, set a good example by living our lives characterized by sobriety, compassion, and commitment to the well-being of others. We can demonstrate the transformative power of Christ's love to those around us. Do not judge others. You do not know what their family is going through when they are exposed to this. Thirdly, we can actively engage our efforts to raise awareness about the dangers of drug abuse and addiction, both within our communities and beyond. This may involve supporting the initiatives aimed at prevention, like Drug Awareness a Month, providing resources and support to those struggling with addiction, and advocating for policies that promote education and access to treatment. Creating support groups in your church with professionals, for example, a social worker, a nurse, Maybe there is a medical uh, doctor that can assist. It may also involve teaching. It will also involve teaching our youth at church. It is not the responsibility of our Sabbath school teachers to do that, but we can assist them in teaching our youth and our Sabbath school class to say no to drugs and empowering them against peer pressure. And fourth, do not put yourselves in situations that will tempt you. Ask God to lead you, right? First Corinthians 10 verse 12 to 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Mm. So let us hold fast to the truth and let us do our duty in being ambassadors of Christ but are also our privilege as instruments 
of his grace and mercy in a broken and hurting world. Amen. The ultimate truth, Jesus saves. Amen. Our closing hymn. Oh, sorry. I've come up. <coughs> oh, I forgot to get a special class. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, dear Lord, that we can come together and that we can learn something about how you can equip us so that we can go out and pray for others, although we might not be uh, equipped in a clinical sense of the word, but wherever we go with you and your spirit, you will equip us to reach them where no doctor will be able to, where no psychologist will be able to, where no counselor will be able to, because we will give them the, the real need of which they require at that time, that Jesus saves even unto the uttermost. So we ask you, Lord, that you'll make us vessels of your love, that we might reach those that are downtrodden, dear Lord. Some of them might be in our family, some of them might be acquaintances that we have come across our paths with, some of them may even be friends that we grew up with, that we went to school with, dear Lord. But we pray, dear Lord, that you will use us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Ina, for the program. Uh,